Hey everybody, Jem Schofield here, and today I'm with Matt. How you doing, Matt? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing well. So here we are at the Catskill Distilling Company. Great location, and what are we talking about today? Today we are talking about prime lenses. Great, so we're talking about prime lenses, and we should probably talk about why we would use prime lenses instead of zoom lenses in certain types of production. Right. So what types of production are we generally seeing prime lenses being used in? So generally prime lenses are being used in situations where it's scripted programming. It's where you have a script, you can break that script down into shot lists, into storyboards, um, you know, anything where you can pre-visualize your footage uh, and apply a certain focal length to each shot. Good, and you really love shooting with prime lenses because it really it makes you think, right? It does, I mean, when you're restricted to having a fixed focal length, you really have to think about where you're putting your camera, what kind of camera moves you're going to do, right. and you know, aesthetic choices about your, um, your aperture, your depth of field, all of these things that, that prime lenses force you to make. Right, and so when we go see feature films, those films are almost always shot with prime lenses. So let's talk a little bit about what we did today, because mm -hmm. we had the opportunity to shoot in this location, use some prime lenses, and I think we'll take a look at the footage while we're talking about it. It's the best way to show people, you know, sort of why we made those decisions. Right, so in this first shot, we started with a 35 millimeter. We want to be a little wide. We want to show the environment that we're putting the characters in. Right. And then what happens is our main character enters the frame and he leads us into the scene. So we have the camera set up on a dolly and we did a push in to the bar. So when we're physically seeing that move of the camera moving from one position to the other, we're really seeing what we would see with our own eyes, right? Right, I mean, if you think about it, our eyes are a fixed focal length lens. They're about a 50 millimeter. And what happens is if you walk in or away from something, that item is getting bigger or smaller because you are getting closer or further away. Got it. A zoom lens has a completely different set of characteristics. So let's take a look at the same shot done with a zoom lens. And what we did is we actually set up the camera to its first position. But in this situation, we didn't physically move the camera from one position to the other. We just zoomed in and we tried to keep the framing of our main character the same, right? Right. So we started with a 35 millimeter where we started our first shot. And then to effectively get the same frame at the end, instead of being on a 35 millimeter now much closer to the subject, We've actually zoomed into 105 millimeters. Big difference. So it's a huge difference. So if you think about taking the field of view of a fixed focal length lens of our 35 millimeter and physically moving that closer to your subject, and then you think about taking the field of view of a 35 millimeter and narrowing that to the field of view of 105 millimeters, the characteristics of the two shots are completely different. And you can see it. Not only does the shot feel different, and it's a little bit more voyeuristic, and it's, it just has a different feel, mm -hmm. but we're not only getting the narrowing of the angle of view, but we're also getting a compression because we're going to a longer focal length. So things are compressing in space. Right. I mean, the characteristics of a, of a wide versus a normal versus a telephoto lens are very different. Right. So we're taking that, and we are physically compressing space which is also reducing the depth of field over the course of a shot, which you wouldn't have moving a fixed focal length lens. Got it. So that's really, really important and, and probably the best example of why we would make a decision as to using a prime over a zoom lens. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about some of the other lenses that we used in this video. This one that's on the 5D Mark II right now was what we used right for the next shot. Is that right? right? So the next shot we shot on a 50 millimeter. Um, and now we're starting to get more into the normal focal length range and we're going to have our medium shot with our character. Right. Um, what's great about this is we were able to shoot it at a 1.4. And you know, this is an attribute that you have with prime lenses that you really don't get with zoom lenses. You know, generally on a zoom lens it's going to be somewhere in the 2.8 range. Um, all the lenses that we have out here range anywhere from a 1.2 to a 2.8 as the slowest. Got it. So you're, you've got a lot more speed and availability of light with these lenses. And when we say a 2.8 on a zoom lens, that's generally the fastest that we'll usually find on a right. zoom. And we might find zooms at a 4 uh, or even slower than that. Absolutely. So that's a big advantage. And that gives us a lot of control over our depth of field and, of course, being able to shoot in low light. And so those are huge attributes. Right, so again, being able to use this as an aesthetic choice in composing our shots, decided to shoot this at a 1.4 because we really wanted to separate the character from the background. 
And so we were really able to, you know, get into the characters a lot more uh, with the visual choices of the, of the lens. And that's pretty typical of narrative filmmaking and commercial work, is that when we have a wide shot, we're usually choosing, and, and this is something that people really need to understand, is that just because a lens is fast, it doesn't mean that you always shoot with the lens wide open. So when we talk about wide shots, we're generally talking about a deep depth of field. And as we start to punch in and get closer into the characters or the subjects, that's where we make the choices to go shallower because we want to get rid of the rest of the world and we want to focus in on that particular character. Right, so the last thing you want to do is start with an establishing shot where you can't see anything in the scene except one small portion in focus. Exactly, or be in tight on the subject and then have all of this clutter in focus behind the person. Absolutely. So the other thing that I saw that you did with this 50 millimeter lens is that we have the reverse shot and when we're looking at that reverse shot you use the same lens and you also made some decisions about where the lens was. Why did you do that? Well in these two shots uh, they live together in the scene. They're part of the same uh, dialogue sequence. So the last thing you want to do is have very different attributes of the shot as you're cutting back and forth. It's distracting, it's confusing, and it's disorienting. So we shot both of these at the 50 millimeter. They're both at the same aperture, and they're both relatively the same distance from the subject, so that we really keep a consistent background. Got it. So one of the other things that we should mention is that we're using this 50 millimeter lens on the 5D Mark II, which is a full frame camera. If we were using um, a crop sensor camera like the 7D or the 60D, then if we wanted to have the same effective field of view, then we would usually choose a focal length of about a 35 millimeter, right? Right, because these cameras have a crop factor of 1.6, so you multiply that by 35 and we're relatively at a 50 millimeter. Got it, okay, good. So let's talk about the last lens that we use in the scene and why we chose to use it. So the last lens we used was a 100 millimeter macro. Uh, with this, we just wanted to you know, be on a longer telephoto lens uh, to shoot close-ups of this photograph. Um, so the first way we used it was just regular over the shoulder. You know, we were about three feet away from the photograph and we were able to get a nice tight shot of that. So the next shot that we did of the character's wedding ring and glass of beer was able to take it beyond what a standard 100 millimeter would do, which would only focus to about three feet. And now we were able to focus you know, around two feet. You could even take this lens to uh, anywhere as close to a foot. So it definitely gives you a lot more advantages in close focus. So I think that gives us a pretty good overview of why we would use prime lenses in production. And again, just to sort of reiterate some of the things we were talking about in the beginning, why do you love using prime lenses so much? Well, I really just love using primes because although it takes a little bit more time, uh, once you understand the attributes of the different focal lengths, you can really kind of use those to their highest advantage in getting a great composition and really applying these towards an aesthetic decision uh, to bring out certain story elements in your film. Right, and it's the way we see the world. Absolutely. And so it really feels natural when we see prime lenses being used in production. Right. So I think what we should do is we should dip to black and we should take a look at this entire scene from start to finish and that way people can get a sense for how we use those different lenses that we've been looking at as we've talked about this stuff. Yep. And thanks so much, Matt. You bet, thank you. Any <clears throat> usual? Yeah, thanks.